Good morning, everybody. So today I'm getting my second COVID vaccine. I'm getting the Pfizer vaccine. That's the first one I got. And I wanted to take you along for that and also take you along because today's a really busy day and I'll be packing for a 10 day trip. And I want to show you how I pack everything I need for 10 days into one book bag. So we're kind of minimalist travelers. We like to pack light and I wanted to show you what we put in there. I'm going to leave right now. My appointment is at 940 and I'm going to take you along, show you what it's like getting vaccine and tell you what I feel like afterwards. Okay, hold on. I just watched that clip back and I swear I have a shirt on. It looked like I did not have a shirt on in that clip, but it's just nude color. <laughs> I'm walking inside and I'm trying to decide if I should get it in the arm I got it in last time or in the other arm. And I'm leaning towards the other arm. I don't know why. I feel like you should just alternate, but I don't know. I'm going to ask them what other people have been doing and we'll see. done with my vaccine you have to sit for 15 minutes after you get it for observation by the nurses to make sure you don't have any kind of reaction so I'm totally fine right now no arm soreness no nothing yet I'm sure it's coming because my arm got so sore last time I did end up going with the other arm I asked the nurse if there was any recommendation by the manufacturer for like alternating arms or anything and they said not really so I just went with the other arm for the heck of it there was a little pinch when it went in and I'm like a baby about that so you probably saw me like squinching my eyes but it really wasn't that bad it didn't hurt as bad as the flu vaccine going in it's only 0.3 ml, so it's not that much volume at all. And also people were asking last time about the vaccine being super cold. They don't have to keep it cold right when they give it to you. So it's able to come out of the really cold temperature for a few hours by the pharmacist before they give it to you. So it was not cold when they gave it to me. It was like room temperature, I think. I didn't ask exactly what temperature it was, but it definitely wasn't cold. And now I'm going to run some errands. No anaphylaxis, so we're off to a good start. I haven't heard of anything bad happening within our hospital system. The worst thing that has happened Happened, I think is somebody passed out because they vagled because of the shot the needle not because of the actual administration of the vaccine so nothing bad going on I have to go return some paint that I didn't use for my cabinets grab a few things and then I'm gonna take you home and show you what I pack in my bag and tell you how I'm feeling I'm about to put away some groceries I got well pack them really because they're for the ride tomorrow and Sunlink is coming because I have an sRNA who's dog sitting and house sitting for me while I'm gone it's an sRNA that's in the program that I graduated from and the internet went out yesterday so I cannot leave an sRNA here with no internet so Sunlink is on their way to try and like investigate what's wrong with the internet I think there might be a line down in the area anyways I'm gonna pack up this food. I'll show you some of the snacks I got for the road and then I will start packing my travel bag. Oh, and also, no symptoms right now. My arm is feeling great. No soreness, no problems, no nothing. I haven't felt any difference since I got the vaccine. The only thing that ever happened was a little pinch. All right, I'm gonna show you what kind of snack action, food action we got going on here. So first I always pack peanut butter and jelly in the car just so we have it. So if we're ever hungry and there's nowhere to eat, we can just grab one and make it really fast. And I got this thin sliced seeds and grains bread. I love this bread, it's like Kroger brand. Then we got some snacks, so don't at me with the processed food thing because vegan processed food is really good and we don't eat it every day, but when we do, we go for it. So here we have some fruit snacks. These are Kroger brand, they don't have gelatin in them, they have pectin. We have Annie's Bunny Grams, the birthday cake flavor is really good. I love these, they're like plant-based Cheez-Its and they were on clearance. So I actually bought a whole bunch and put some in the cabinet for when we get back. Some peanut butter cookies, John really likes these. I don't really like peanut butter that much, but he loves them. I really love these. These are delicious for like a quick breakfast snack or something like that. And then got some Jack and Friends jerky. It's made with jackfruit. I love this jerky and I actually have a discount code, affiliate code for this company. So I'll put that in the description below. I have two flavors here, ginger teriyaki and tomato and poblano. They're both really good, I've had them before. And then last but not least, vegan cracklins, the Korean barbecue kind. I haven't had this kind yet, I've had the ranch one though, and they're really good. I love crunchy stuff. 
Then we have some fruit, raspberries, bananas, and oranges, and then I'm gonna make some subs. So I have some tofurkey turkey slices, some cheese. We're gonna put tomatoes, tomatoes, <laughs> cucumbers, avocado, spinach, and mustard on here. We got some wheat rolls. And that is what we've got going on food-wise. I'm into my road trip snacks because A, I hate stopping, and B, there's not a lot of great options when you're on the road besides like fast food, so we'll be stocked up for our trip. I'm packing my bag now, and I wanna show you what my bag looks like before I show you what I put in it. So I have an Osprey. I can't remember which backpack it is, but I'll find it and link it below. I've had it for years and years. I got it on sale, I think in 2015. So first you have the really big compartment where all the clothes go, a little storage spot, and then there's a spot for the laptop, all the valuables, things like that. And then I have a little spot here for like wallet, keys, passport, phone, anything you wanna be able to grab quickly. And there's water bottle spots on the front. And this opens up because it can be a backpack or it can just be a carry by the handle which is on this side. So I'm gonna show you how I fit all my stuff in here. I've used this a lot before for trips and pack just this and it has a ton of space. Another great thing is it can be a carry-on. So let's start with the shoes because those are easy. So I have a pair of dressy flip-flops and a pair of hiking sandals, so my Chacos. Those I'm going to pack and then I'm gonna wear my sneakers, just plain black sneakers because they go with everything. I like to put these in the bottom of my luggage because it kind of keeps it propped open. Next we'll do like the undergarments. So I have one bra and that is just a plain black bra, like not wired just in case I need something to like have a little extra coverage. And then I have a bunch of underwear enough for 10 days. And then I have one, two, three, four, four pairs of socks here, and I'm gonna wear a pair of socks. So I think five should be enough for 10 days because I'll wear sandals most of the time. Then I have three hair bands. I have a black one, just like this gray one that I can't find, but because I probably won't be washing my hair as much as normal because we'll be in the van, I like to have these hair bands so I can put it up in a messy bun. So I'm just gonna stick those in there. Now we'll go into the bathing suit. So I have a plain black bikini, super easy, goes with everything. Stick that in there. And then I have a red bikini, same thing. Really easy, really cute. And then I have a black one piece, which I'm, I've never worn a one piece, but I bought this second hand and I thought it was super cute. The back's cut out. So I'm gonna try it out and see if I like it. And then I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna bring this last one or not. This is from Target, it's like really old. So I'm gonna actually leave this right here until the end and then I'll make a decision. We're about to move on to the bottoms. I'm just pulling the shorts out. Okay, so I'll show you my pants first. So I have two pairs of workout pants in case we get a little workout in. Just two pair of purple ones are like my favorite ones. They're the most comfortable. I'll stick those right here. Two pairs of leggings in case it's a chilly day. And that is black and green. They go with everything basically that I have. So that's super easy. And then I have bottoms like shorts wise. So I have two pairs of athletic shorts for like hiking or if we work out. One pair of green loose shorts that go perfect with a black tank top. I love these shorts, they're so comfortable. I wear them all the time during the summer. And then I have some jean shorts, a black pair, a dark jean pair, and then a regular jean pair that I really love, but they have a hole in the butt. So I only wear them when like I have my bathing suit on and we're going to the beach. But that way I don't get the ones I wanna wear like when I'm not wet, wet. <laughs> okay, so I moved that right there so you can see how much space I have left and my tops are gonna easily fit in here. First we'll go over the short sleeves. So I brought one short sleeve that I like to sleep in that is just this like plain green one. This goes great with the black shorts. It's just a dressy little short sleeve shirt in case I want to like, wear anything cute. And then I brought this because this like can't go wrong with it. It's black and white striped. I can wear it with like any black bottoms basically. Last one, this is one of my favorite shirts. You probably see me wear a lot. It's just like a crop top, loose, thick cotton, very nice. And last we have the tank tops. So gray tank top, I'm just gonna throw them in there so you don't have to watch me like fold them up. Just a plain black tank top. I like to tuck that in a jean shorts one workout tank top that matches both of the pants. Thankfully, I don't sweat a lot when I'm working out really, so I can wear the same thing like over and over. It won't be a problem or it won't be stinky. Loose black tank top here. I'm trying to hurry so this part's not too long. Just a little gray tank top. It's like a sweater material. I really like this one. A few black crop tops, just plain black tank tops. They're like, one's like, one's just like this one. It stops right here and one's a little longer. And I'm also gonna pack this one because I love this one. This is also one of my favorites. I just found it at the thrift store the other day. So it's already my favorite. I've worn it a couple times already. It's just a purple one. 
halter crop top. And then this is another sleeping one because it's really long so you can wear it with just like boy shorts or underwear and it goes down to about here on me. It's just like a American Eagle tee I found at the thrift store. So now I'm going to show you how I close it so you know you believe me that everything fit. Just like that. And there's even more room. I could fit more stuff in there if I really wanted to. I still have room for my laptop, my notebook, my planner, anything I want to put in here. And then all my toiletries which are going to be thrown in here. I'm going to pack one of these for John as well because he doesn't care what he has to wear and he doesn't feel like packing because he's at work today. And then I'm also going to pack B's travel book bag which is in the closet right now. I probably wouldn't normally pack this much stuff but because we're going to be in the van and we're not going to be like carrying the bag around true backpacking, I felt like I could bring a few extra things just in case I wanted them. But if we were backpacking like in another country or carrying the bag a lot, I probably would have bought half this amount of stuff. And I will show you that in the future when travel opens back up. I had to put my sweater on because I'm kind of cold right now. And I'm gonna show you my toiletries and what I'm packing for that. So first of all, I'm packing face wipes because we are gonna be in a van and our water access is gonna be limited. There is a sink and running water in the van, but it is not like we can just be running water the whole time and washing our face. So I got some face wipes so I can wipe my face at the end of the day. Then I have shampoo, conditioner, soap, and lotion. I always bring these for when we go on trips. We'll use like public showers or showers at the gym or something like that to wash off. I have sunscreen, so this is like the Reef Safe brand. It's also cruelty free. Some sunglasses, that's not really a toiletry, but I forgot to show you that in my bag before. A hairbrush, and then I'll show you what's in my little bag. This is like where everything fits that I bring. I have a face lotion, mascara, and eyeliner. This is like the only makeup I really wear, so I'm just gonna bring it just in case I wanna put it on at all. An extra hair tie, tweezers and fingernail clippers. I feel like this is something you might need that would be just nice to have. Then I brought a bunch of um, Q-tips because I always use Q-tips. Um, flossers and my contact stuff right here because I'm blind without my contacts. And the last thing I'm gonna pack is my deodorant and my toothbrush and toothpaste because I can't pack those yet because I need to use them tonight. And I have extra of everything else to use tonight. So that is all my toiletry stuff right there. I'm going to pack it into the book bag. John and I basically share everything except like deodorant. B has her own toiletries because she uses like a different kind of lotion, a different kind of hair stuff, a different brush, all that. So she has like a whole hair bag and then her skincare bag. We'll get that packed up for her and put it in her little book bag. I just went to the gym and did a quick deadlift and back day. So I felt like if I used my arm, I felt like, I felt like if I used my arm, it might get less sore. So I did upper body back and then I also deadlifted before that. Now I'm going to pick up B. I was thinking, I didn't tell you guys where we're going. I don't know how I made it through this whole vlog so far without telling you where. So we are renting a camper van in Asheville, North Carolina. More on that to come in the travel vlogs. And we are going on a 10 day road trip, actually 11 day road trip, testing out van life. If you've been following me for a while, you know I've been trying to talk John into moving into a van, but he's not super into the idea. He likes to travel in one, but not to live in one. So we're gonna test it out. And I think we're gonna head down to Key West. We live in West Virginia. If you didn't know that, we're gonna head down to Key West, take our time, make a lot of cool stops, and should be great. I'm about to go to bed because we have to get up really early tomorrow to leave, but I wanted to update you on how I'm feeling because it has been 12 hours since I had my shot. I was looking at the clock. So my arm is pretty sore. It's getting there, like maybe now it's a three or a four instead of a one on a scale of one to 10. And it's not as bad as it was last time, so hopefully it doesn't get that bad. And I am starting to feel a little bit achy. Nothing horrible, but definitely can feel achiness like in my hips and stuff. But we'll see what I feel like when I wake up tomorrow morning. I'm hoping I sleep through like the worst part of it. I won't end this vlog right now because I want to update you one more time in the morning, let you know how I'm feeling. But for now, good night. We are officially on the road in our van. I wanted to update you guys really fast on my COVID vaccine after effects. So my arm is way less sore than my first COVID vaccine. And I think that's because I got it in my dominant arm and I've been moving it a lot more. I did have some body aches, but they're not really bad. They are not as bad as the first one, which is weird because they said all the symptoms would be worse with the second one. But I've kind of had the opposite experience. Um, I have been a little fatigued. I don't know if I'm tired because I just switched off night shift to the past um, three days I was working night shift. So that might be why, or it's from the vaccine. But other than that, I feel great. My body aches are mostly like in my hips and my legs, but they're almost gone now. I'm about 36 hours post vaccine. So I feel like this could be the last update because my arm is 
less sore than when I got the flu shot right now and my body aches are almost gone. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. We are currently somewhere in South Carolina on our way to Georgia and follow along for our travel vlogs after I post this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching my COVID vaccine and me talking about it and also me packing my stuff into one bag. I will link COVID research in the description below as always so that you guys can do your own research. It will be scholarly literature, peer reviewed articles. So feel free to take a look at those. If you have any questions, leave them below. Have a great week and I will see you next week, maybe before that.